Hello and welcome to Launchpad, a podcast from the Innovation Launchpad Network Plus, which looks to accelerate research and innovation in the UK. I'm your host, Paul Stimson, and today we'll be joined by Nicola Coxon. She's the University of Sheffield's Impact Officer. Nicola ran an excellent session at a recent Researcher in Residence induction event, rolls off the tongue, in Sheffield, and kindly agreed to continue the conversation on this podcast for those who uh, weren't in attendance and for our wider network of academics and industry professionals. Um, But before we go into the podcast, let me give you a quick introduction to the Innovation Launchpad Network Plus. The Innovation Launchpad Network Plus, funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, the EPSRC, brings together leading universities, a catapult network, and regional innovation ecosystems, and enriches the exchange of ideas and knowledge across these organizations. One of the ways we do that is through the Researcher in Residence Scheme, and this really is a flagship activity for our network. For those who don't know, we award up to £50,000 to researchers in the UK whose research proposal fits within at least one of our key themes, which are net zero, resilience, and healthcare and wellbeing. These projects are awarded on a collaborative basis, meaning that it is a requirement for researchers to work alongside at least one of the catapults. And you can find out more about the catapults and the catapult network over on innovationlaunchpad.ac.uk. All right, that is that. Let's throw over to the main part of the podcast. So, Nicola. I guess, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. Um, I guess introduce yourself, please, if you don't mind. All right, yeah, so I'm Nicola Coxon and I'm the University Impact Officer um, at the University of Sheffield. So I sit within our Central Research Partnerships and Innovation Team supporting on impact. Yeah, and for those who don't know, Nicola very kindly ran a session for us um, a couple of weeks ago. It feels like a long time ago now, actually. It does, um, you can feel with you. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it was last year, but um, <laughs> yeah, so you ran a session for our research and residents. Um, how did it go? I feel like the feedback so far has been great. Um, I don't know how you felt it went. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it was, um, it was really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think like I said to you at the time, I'd only been in the role in a few weeks, so it's quite, um, yeah, baptism of fire, but no, it was really good. And yeah, it was great to have an opportunity at the end of the session, sort of have a chat with a few of the the researchers there um, and they had a few extra questions so yeah no it was a really yeah really interesting I mean I suppose it's difficult because I can only talk from a Sheffield point of view and as I think yeah. we're talking sort of a lot of the time about specifics within the university um, a lot of it was around and I, I get the same questions here it was around sort of effective ways of evidencing impact um, did I have any sort of top tips, which there isn't always a like everything um, with impact. There isn't always a one size fits all. But yeah, it was just around sort of some of the questions anyway, yeah, effective ways of doing that. And, and when is the best time to sort of collate impact? And is there a, a good method for sort of saving it somewhere? Um, yeah. So, yeah, those sort of things, really. Cool. So I guess, yeah, impact is, is a, a pretty important word I guess in this research space can you kind of sum it up what is it yeah in the context so, of research I guess yeah um I think that's it. it it gets tricky and it's hard because I feel like in impact I also use the word impact a lot meaning other things so yeah, yeah. But in terms of in terms of research in academia um it's it's really just benefit just to completely give a really a really simple um definition it just means the benefit, so the real world benefit or change um, that has happened as a result of research. I suppose the key thing is that it's it's benefit outside of academia. So mm. you've got sort of your academic research and it's it's looking at that real world sort of benefit or change outside of academia. Um, so yeah, it's quite broad. It can be, you know, that can be a benefit to individuals, groups, um, different businesses, society. Um, but yeah, I think the key thing is it's demonstrable, so you've got to be able to to measure it. It's sort of a measurable change or benefit. Um, yeah, that's happened as a result of research. Yeah, I think we were speaking about it at the event actually. How if you just kind of took a step back from the research, mm-hmm. it is quite a simple way of. But you take a step back and to see what you know what it what it looks like, uh, how it affects the the public, the public interest. Um, yeah. So I get what is. What are the types of impact then? Just to go into the the, the next question, what yeah. is the types of it? 
again, very broad, as it always yeah. is with them. Like, um, just because it, it really, it can be, it's so wide ranging and vast because it, you know, obviously, understandably, you can have completely different types of impact for different types of research. So, you know, if you're doing a project around health or, or medicine, um, the likely impacts and benefits of that, well, you know, likely to be very different from, say, an arts-based project or humanity. Mm-hmm. So, um, but generally, um, generally impacts are sort of grouped into, so it might be policy and law change, it could be economic, uh, health and well-being at a societal level or environmental. So they're sort of your key umbrellas, but I mean, I will have missed some there. Again, it's sort of, it's not an exhaustive list, but so more specifically, it might be, um, so enhanced well-being of a certain group of people or a population. Um, it could be new methodologies that have been created. Um, if you're working sort of in an organisation or business, it could be reducing costs in production, um, sort of organisational changes and an improvement in productivity. So there's a lot of, um, yeah, a, a lot of different ways that impact can look look like yeah. depending on, on the work that you're doing, yeah. So we're looking kind of outside the realms of publishing a paper and someone else citing that paper. We're looking at kind of, as you say, policy changes and yeah. impact in the real world. Yeah, yeah. And I think in, in all of those things, you know, sort of, <laughs> You know, because we look at citations and we look at metrics as a way of measuring impact, but it, it's sort of not enough on its own. Um, mm. In the same way, you've got things like, you know, if, if you deliver a conference, you're, you're sharing that work with other people, you're sharing that research, and that's a great way of, of disseminating. But I suppose the impact is really, so what next? Sort of what happened as a result of that? Yes, you've shared it with these people. Yes, you've written this paper, and it might have been cited by several people, but... But is there a change or a benefit that's happened as a result of that? I think that's that's the key thing. Yeah. The next question I've got on my list is why is it important? And that's kind of a big question. So I guess the floor is yours. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And perhaps, yeah, perhaps me on my own, I'm not qualified to answer that. But I think I suppose, like for all the reasons I've just mentioned, um, looking at it at a massive sort of widespread level, ultimately. It's just the good that research is doing in the world. You know, for all of those reasons, we should we should want to make an improvement. You know, it's an improvement in in society and it, it's it's a benefit. So it's a real world benefit. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a sort of baseline. Why is it important? But then if you're looking at it in more detail, um, you know, for institutions, um, you know, at universities, it has a, a real impact. See, you can't use the word impact and impact. So it has a real benefit um, to sort of influence and reputation. So if you're looking at sort of university rankings or, or your sort of national or even international reputation, I think being able to sort of demonstrate strong impact from an institution that has an effect on that. Um, for the individual researcher, you know, in terms of publicity, engagement and your own career development again being able to sort of evidence that you've the work that you have done has, has led to led to strong impact is really important um and obviously around around funding we can't ignore um we can't ignore the the financial element mm-hmm. of it um so it, it's you know most funding applications now most of the the uk research councils um, and funding bodies really want to see the impact is embedded into a project it's a key consideration now when reviewing applications um but as well you know you can sort of for collaboration contract research you know people may approach you if they're aware of of things that being done that are being done um and then yeah there's also the research excellence framework um where where impact plays a big part of that um yeah around the, the quality of the research within an institution so yeah, there's a range of, of reasons as to why it's important, both, you know, both personally at a wider level and, and for the institution that you work for. Yeah. One project that we funded from the first tranche, um, I won't say who the person's name is because I don't have the details in front of me and I'm probably going to mess it up. Um, <laughs> one of the things you're looking at is the, like the greenhouse gas emissions around Bristol Temple Mead Station um, and just basically how they can improve that. So I've, in here in Sheffield, anyway, the area around the train station is really bad for pollution. So I, yeah. I think that's across the board. So they're looking at ways they can kind of improve that. But it's also kind of 
yes, they're going to electrify the trains, but also it's how people get to the train station. So I think his research is going to be on surveys of how people get there. And then they'll, you know, maybe they'll look at providing, maybe they might electrify the, the buses there as well, yeah, maybe yeah. Uh, an, an easier way on the climate to get to the the, the train station. And I'd imagine yeah. once he collects his data, he'll then lobby the local councils. And that's that's kind of where the impact comes in, doesn't it? If I yeah. got that right. <laughs> No, absolutely, yeah, and something like that is a real great example. And then, yeah, that's sort of, and again, that's at quite a, a regional level. But if that could be used as an example of it, could be rolled out further to other, mm. yeah, um, other regions. So, yeah, 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 it is. It's about getting that feedback after, and yeah, seeing yeah. that change. But yeah, to be honest, and, and saying about funders, you know, climate change and sustainability, that you know, those areas are real sort of hot topics at the moment as well. So. Yeah really yeah. see that clear change yeah the next um so i was gonna ask you about top tips but you did kind of uh debunk that <laughs> in the intro do you have any top tips for researchers or is it a case of yeah so yeah as much as there isn't you know i can't sort of say this is how you do impact but there are some there are a few tips that are sort of applicable to to any researcher really um and i think the first one mainly and i suppose this is where this is where this network and this scheme is, is such a good example because it's already, you know, it's sort of getting you off that that starting block is about exploring and using external collaborations. Um, you know, real, seeing real lasting sort of impact or change, it's, it's just not possible without collaboration and um, with external partners. So, you know, obviously that's where something like this really, really plays its part because it's it's taking academia and applying it to real world problems um, and working with companies. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's a really sort of top tip and that's that's a really key part of, of impact and, and sort of, yeah, building those collaborations and building those relationships so that you can work alongside each other um, is really important. As well, I think um, impact really can be seen sometimes anyway, not all the time, but sometimes as a bit of an afterthought, sort of mm. something that you do. I've done my project. Okay, now someone's asking me about impact, so I need to try and I need to try and see what was done. Um, and I know it's easy for me to say, oh, think about it from the start and throughout because I know there's, there's time pressures and workload, but I think really it's so important to think about impact well at the start. So um at the start of a project, um, and really thinking about it throughout. So so never sort of losing. I suppose losing sight of, of who you're doing it for and what what changes might come as a result of that. Yeah, I'd also say as well as as a marketing and comms person working for a university, I'd always be happy to have ten minutes with a researcher who thinks we've got you know a great Absolutely. project. Yeah. It's, it's I'd say I would assume most marketing people are approachable. That's kind of our jobs. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I I mean my my top tip. I mean it's probably not not as a uh, yeah my professional top tip would be to speak to speak to your marketing and comms team because they'll definitely want to hear about the impact that's coming not only from your researcher but also from the university as well your yeah. institution absolutely yeah and in fact no that was a good prompt because that was one that I meant to put on my list so yeah ah. <laughs> but yeah I think yeah shouting about it and using these different channels and it you know like you say that the teams and resources are there at institutions and it's it, it's getting the word out yeah and it's mm. as well, I think, having that conversation with someone else, someone else who's sort of not involved in the research can perhaps make you see yeah. different things that you didn't see. You know, I've had so many conversations with people where I'm like, OK, well, that, that's really brilliant. You know, can I put this in this newsletter or, you know, you should contact them and do a blog about it. And a lot of people themselves sort of don't really see it as massively impactful. But I think mm. having someone else come in and say, oh, no, but look, look at this yeah. change that's happened. You know, it's a really interesting yeah, a really I'll, interesting I'll, I'll name check another, well, not name check, but I'll discuss another <laughs> project. Uh, it's, it's, they're doing a digital catapult down in London. They're trying to, they've, they've got centers on, basically on, on, on the brain. So they'll, they'll, they'll get someone to do a task in a work environment and they'll just see which part of the brain lights up in terms of which part is uh, using it, basically. <laughs> which part of the brain is reacting to this particular thing wow well, that's really interesting like yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. if you've not finished your you know your your your, your data set yet you know that's a really yeah. cool thing to 
just talk about them. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they definitely need to fight their shell a little bit after their rings. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. But I think, you know, it's, and I'm coming at it, you know, I'm not an academic, so I think you can be so embedded in something where you don't necessarily mm-hmm. see, see what's happening. And I think I think that's important with impact as well and thinking about sort of who your beneficiaries are and what, what change it might have in them. I think that's why it's good to sort of think about it throughout because as well, projects change, you know, things yeah. take different directions. So we've Definitely. seen things here at Sheffield where things have taken a different kind of unexpected avenue that we didn't think was going to happen immediate, you know, at the start of a project. So yeah. it's really important to sort of, yeah, check in throughout. And plus it makes it much, much easier. You know, I've worked with researchers where you then, at the end, particularly for Ref, trying to sort of get evidence together and you're asking them to look back in the emails over the past seven years over how could you contact them? And it's just, yeah, it's not fun. So yeah. yeah. Well, let's round off with I guess how do we if anyone wants to kind of look at any resources and obviously we had a slide deck that went out. Um yeah. I'd be happy to share that if you're happy to for me to share that with people. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um yeah, I was just having a look at that actually because I know I identified a few on there. I mean, I would say, you see, I, I don't, I don't know um, sort of the infrastructure at every university, but there will be, you know, there will be teams there and there will be resources available at each institution. Um, so I think making use of those because there, there will be people to speak to, and like you say, comms teams, you know, there's a loads of people to speak to. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm more than happy for you to share the share the slide deck. So there's, I mean, just the top of my head, you know, this National Coordinating Centre for Public Engagement, which has loads of sort of good resources on there, um, mm-hmm. good sort of templates and tools that can be used. But yeah, there's there's lots of different things. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Oops. Oh, God, I just punched the microphone. I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time. That's it again. Thanks so much for your time, Nicola. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. <laughs> That's not a problem. No, thank you. It's been, yeah, it's been really interesting. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, thank you to Nicola for that. Um, if you're interested in the slide deck that we discussed, uh, please do get in touch with me on p.j.stimpson at sheffield.ac.uk. Um, I'll also pop that in the description of this, whether you're listening on Spotify or YouTube. Um, so hopefully you found that interesting, you know, whether you're thinking about applying to our scheme, whether you're you know someone who might be interested or you're just generally interested in what we're doing and what researchers are doing in the UK. Um, We just have some small announcements to make. Uh, If you head over to innovationlaunchpad.ac.uk, you can see a full list of the successful research projects from Tranche 2. And we expect those to get underway very shortly. As far as Tranche 1 is concerned, we're getting some very exciting tidbits of early findings and outputs from our researchers who are way into their projects now. Um, and we'll be covering these uh, short stories on the website, um, but also in a new publication, an online publication called The Abstract, produced by the Innovation and Launchpad Network Plus. Uh, more news on that to come very soon as we look to launch at the end of March. Um, as always, keep up to date with our activities on our socials, which, which is Innovation Launchpad Network Plus on Twitter, X, LinkedIn and YouTube. Thanks again for joining us and we're back next month with another podcast. Bye-bye.